We're in a war to keep this oil out of our wetlands, off of our coast. I'm incredibly proud of our soldiers that have really stepped up to serve the, the citizens of our state. The best part of my experience is working with the soldiers. We can be on, on scene within 24 hours responding to an emergency like this. The National Guard's been working 24-7. Put the National Guard in charge, I don't think we'd have a problem. The work that our soldiers are doing is incredibly important. I'm one of the operations officers in our Tactical Operations Center. I'm here at the Governor's Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness. Uh, my job basically is to go ahead and track and report all of the different missions that we have, which preventing the uh, oil from washing over the beaches, you know, and contaminating further inland. We're doing what's called Tiger Dam. The uh, 10, 20 seconds laying down a uh, protective barrier on the beach of Grand Isle. Keep the oil on the, the seaside. It runs approximately 8.2 miles. We initially, in 10 days, laid down the initial two tubes, and now we're going back with a third uh, black tube for additional uh, protection across the top. To deploy the Tiger Dam, it takes a team of 14. Three doing the pumping, five holding the Tiger Dam down, and you have a team of four laying the Tiger Dam out. It's actually Gulf water that, that we pump into each Tiger Dam. Our office, uh, what we do here during man-made or natural disasters is to coordinate and execute all aviation support operations. We'll have anywhere from five to eight, seven aviation missions per day. We've been typically flying between 45 and 50 flight hours per day. We've dropped over 5,000 sandbags, 10.5 million pounds of sand. That's a lot of sling load operations. Hook up man in sight, continue forward and down. Down five. I'm a crew chief on the uh, Black Hawk helicopter. Three, two, one, hold position. Load is hooked. I fly the sling load mission. Close 10 foot off the ground. You have the load. We're not in our regular crew chief seat. We'll be in the uh, back of the aircraft on a tether. Usually we'll be laying across the floor and so looking out so we can see. I have drop zone in sight. Continue forward and down. Continue forward 10 feet. Five, four, three, two, one, hold position. Release the load. Load is released. We are flying an operational tempo on the airframes that we have. Not quite, but pretty darn close to what we were flying overseas in Iraq and Afghanistan. I mean, that's the type of operational tempo that we're keeping throughout this operation, so it's pretty amazing. Basically, we're supporting uh, some civilian assets so they can come out here and try to suck up this oil with their vacuum units. We have our bridge unit that we've made a raft out of. We bring them out here with our boats and basically support them while they do their thing. Well, they have some big tank vacuums that they put their hoses into the water and suck up basically water and oil and put it into a larger tank and separate it later. You know, I have to tell you that when we needed additional resources, in particular helicopters, and I have to tell you we got helicopters from Florida, helicopters from Mississippi, from Missouri, from Illinois, and I've gotten calls every day from Ashton journals across the country and said, let us know what you need. We'll send you people, we'll send you resources. That's the kind of spirit of the National Guard in this United States of America. I'm proud to be part of it. The National Guard is the only military agency that you have. We can serve both your state and your federal government. So anytime uh, when our citizens, our wildlife, our culture is threatened, the National Guard is the first responders that's there for any type of challenge. It's about survival. There's a lot at stake here, and that's why we have to respond the way we're responding. We've got to save our coast, and we've got to save our way of life.